My name is Paul Dorado. Uh, I already know uh, quite a few of you actually. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, so I'm an investigative journalist from Romania uh, and I run an uh, organization that is called uh, the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project that operates uh, all over e Eastern Europe. Uh, we are an umbre umbrella organization uh, over centers for investigative journalism. You know the situation right now with the media in, uh, in the Balkans but uh, also in other parts of uh, our region uh, is that uh, lots of newspapers got rid of their investigative units and uh, not only papers, but also TV stations and uh, some radio stations that had them. So, um, what you could see for the past, let's say, eight years was uh, a mushrooming of uh, investigative centers. Uh, and these centers are basically not for profits um, that uh, are right, right now investigating corruption uh, in our region and uh, all sorts of, uh, of crime. And, uh, um, so, the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project uh, which is basically right now this website, uh, operates on a regional basis. That means uh, we work on uh, uh, investigations that engage uh, journalists in, uh, in quite a few countries. Uh, usually our investigations are uh, six to eight countries. So it's all about, about cross-border investigative journalism. But the most important things when you're studying journalism and when you're, uh, when you're writing uh, for your public is, uh, is, is proximity. Well. That's true, in a way, but that's true only for uh, local journalism. When it comes to cross-border journalism, uh, uh, this all changes a lot. Um, for instance, uh, in order to track down organized crime groups that operate in many countries, you can't just tackle that problem locally. You can't just go to your local police and ask them, hey, can you give me some data on this group? Uh, and you can't because the local police will not have that data because uh, these, uh, these, uh, these groups, they operate across frontiers. Uh, they operate very well you know, in uh, various uh, uh, geographical areas. Some of them can be on the same continent, some of them are on various continents. Uh, I'm talking here about very large uh, drug trafficking networks. And it, in, in my opinion, it's, it's very important uh, you know, that we could cover such, uh, such, such crime, such, uh, such cross-border crime. And that is because um, such crime affects the lives, uh, uh, our lives every day. So this sort of cooperation always pays off. You know, first of all, because uh, it's, uh, it's cross-border cooperation, you don't uh, compete on the same market. So it's not like you have two newspapers here in, in, in town you know, that uh, fight for who's, who, who's, who's going to publish for the story. Uh, you're talking here about cross-border journalism. You're talking about various countries. Uh, so. There's a lot, a lot of value in exchanging such, such data. But besides exchanging data like this, uh, there is another component that is very important right now for investigative journalists, and that is the usage of, uh, of technology. Technology must be uh, implemented in the investigative process, uh, and technology must be implemented not only in, uh, into the realm of investigative journalists, but in, in the realm of all journalism. Because we see for the past few years a gap between, and actually not for the past few years, actually for quite many years, a gap between our public and uh, ourselves. And that is for various reasons. You, you can blame you know, the, the DTO of newspapers on Google, you can blame it on Facebook, you, you can you know, blame lots of things that uh, are uh, happening right now. But uh, the most important thing in, in my view is that uh, we are not connecting right to the public. And this is because we are still uh, thinking in the old ways when we, are, when we are trying to write our articles, when we are trying to, to highlight the information that, that we got. Uh, and when I'm saying this is, uh, you know, people are not going to read on the web uh, 10 pages of our investigative work, where we publish, for instance, you know, the names of 50 companies and 100 people, and you know, the fact that this company is connected to that company, to that company, to that company, to that people. People are not that much, uh, I mean, people want the essence of that. You have, of course, people who are interested in deeper layers of your investigative work. So, um, in my opinion, what we have to do with investigative work, but also with stories, with other types of stories, is that we have to structure them. We have to structure them in layers. 
And that means, um, um, uh, and this is just my, my opinion, is that we need to use lots of visualizations. We, we, we have to use graphics. Uh, and uh, so, so that we can actually structure and, uh, the investigative work in a few layers. The first layer would be visual. Would be just, you know, for instance, let's say you have a story about uh, someone in the government who got a bribe. Um, and of course, you have documents, you have lots of interviews with that story and all that. But I think the first layer, the visual layer, should be something that you can post in the city, in the center of the city, on a huge billboard. So something very, very simple that people can grasp, like this guy here, the bribe here, the money here, the bank here, whatever, and just a few lines be between them. Uh, now, of course, this is very simplified. Now, but behind this layer, behind this first layer, you can have other layers. The second layer is going to contain documents, it's going to contain interviews, video, audio. The third layer could contain all the, uh, all the, uh, the papers, all the uh, web documents that you gather during your investigative work. Because another thing here is, during our work, we have to do with lots of uh, text documents, lots of types of papers and stuff like that. But the truth is that uh, we only use a fraction of that, a small fraction of that in our work. So when we actually publish the story, a lot of our work is left aside. And I think that it's very important to have this layer where we put all our research, because that research can be very important to other journalists. And also, I think another layer that should be added, and this is uh, with the help of the web, you know, which I think for us it's quite an uh, opportunity, is you have to explain to, uh, to your public how you did it. How did you create that investigative piece? Because uh, perhaps it's the case here in, in Georgia as well, but uh, in many Eastern European countries, you know, you have uh, invest so-called investigative articles, which are in fact just information that are fed by the law enforcement, by the police, by various interested parties to, to some journalists, and they publish them as great investigative pieces and stuff like that. But in fact, that's not the work of the journalist, but it's just someone who leaks information and you don't even go for checking these, uh, these, uh, these documents. And that, unfortunately, happens quite, quite often. Uh, and because it happens so, so often, uh, this means that the public is kind of fed up with this sort of information. And they're always asking, you know, okay, what's the interest behind this uh, story? Uh, who has the interest for this story to be published? Uh, who has the interest for this video story to, to, uh, to get published? And, uh, you know, there are always these conspiracy theories that go around, uh, that float around. So the idea would be that this extra layer that you can add with your investigative work and with any journalism work uh, can actually introduce how you work, uh, how you did that investigative work. Okay, in order to get this document, I went to this database and I asked for this data. Uh, I filed this freedom of information request with these uh, guys. I work with journalists in these countries. So it's, it's very important. It's very important to highlight what the investigative process is, so that people can uh, can understand uh, how this work was done. So this is my kind of let's say layer theory. Uh, 